So it is April 1st, and none of you were fools because you came to church today, so that's wonderful. Thank you so much for making it to church this morning. Thank you for making the effort to be here today. I am very, very pleased to see so many of you that you have come to church to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's Easter, so it's a wonderful and joy-filled day in the life of all of us people of faith. And today, what we celebrate, today what we celebrate is that God so loved each and every one of us that he gave his only son for us. <laughs> that he gave his only son for us. Not that God so loved the world, but that God loved us, each of us, and gave his only son, that we might have life and have it in abundance. During the time of the people of Israel, during the time of Jesus, there were people all around who worshipped different gods and goddesses. And these gods and goddesses demanded sacrifice from their adherents. They demanded that you sacrifice to them. They wanted sacrifice. And so it was known the people of Israel knew that all the other gods around them wanted sacrifice, including human sacrifice. You know that from history, including in our own backyard, the Aztecs and others who practiced human sacrifice to their gods because their gods demanded sacrifice. Our God is different. The God of Israel is different. And we are the new Israel. We are the new people of God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is different. The God of Jesus Christ is different. He does not demand sacrifice. In fact, he says, I detest your sacrifices. They please me not. They cause me anguish. I don't want any of your sacrifices. The God of Israel, our God, the God of Jesus Christ, is different. He does not demand sacrifice. He sacrifices himself for us. He doesn't want you to sacrifice to him lambs and goats and rams. He sacrifices himself for you. So much does he love you that he gives his only son who comes, Jesus who is God, and offers himself as a sacrifice for us. He gives his life for us. During the time of Jesus, all the other people around the people of Israel, the Romans and the, and the Greeks, they had gods who could care less about the people that worshipped them. They were far removed from them. All they wanted was for those people to give them things, to sacrifice to them. Our God is different. Our God is the one who gives himself for us and gives his only son for us. That is the God that you have come to worship on this 
Easter morning. The God who continues to give himself continuously for you. Who didn't just give himself once on that cross, but at each and every Mass, we call it the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Who offers himself here for us? It's Jesus who offers himself on the altar for us over and over again. God continues to offer himself for us. So much does he love us. Why did God die on the cross for us? Because he did not want to live without us. That's why he died for us. God died for you so that he wouldn't have to live without you. And yet, you go through life offering sacrifices to all these gods and goddesses around that care less for you, that couldn't give anything about you. They don't care about you. And yet you offer them sacrifices. You sacrifice yourself to the God of your work. That's why you never have time. You work 12, 14 hours a day as if you were a horse. You, you have sacrificed yourself to your work, to the God of your work. You have no time for your family. You have no time for yourself. You have no time for prayer. You have no time for the God who made you because you work and work and work. That is your God. You have sacrificed yourself to that God. You sacrifice yourself to the God of your money, of your bank account. That is your God. You've sacrificed yourself to the God of the casino. Oh yes. You've sold yourself to him. And you think he is interested in you. He's not interested in you. He's interested in exploiting you. Like the gods of the Greeks and the Romans. They were not interested in the people who offered them sacrifices. They wanted to exploit them and use them. How many have sold themselves to the internet, to pornography, to pleasure, to sex, to drugs, to alcohol, to plastic surgery, to the God of fame, glory, sold yourself. Have you sold yourself to these gods by sacrificing yourself? God says the only sacrifice I demand is your heart. The sacrifice I want is your contrite spirit. Offer me your heart. That is the sacrifice I want. The Bible says we shall only worship the Lord our God and Him alone shall we serve. Only Him. Today, when you serve and worship and adore and sacrifice to the gods of the world, to the idols around, you find yourself in a tomb. Sacrificing and worshiping money, your work, pleasure, the casino, the bottle, or other people. Yes, that is possible too when you have made an idol out of someone in your life. 
can't live without them. They are everything. They have taken possession of you. When that has happened, you are in a tomb. You are dead. And today the Lord Jesus says to each and every one of us, as I rose some 2,000 years ago from the dead. You see, he already rose. The church celebrates Easter because the need for us to rise is there. The need for you and me to rise is there. We have to rise from the tomb that we are in, that the gods of the world have placed us in. Whatever tomb you find yourself in, roll away the stone this Easter. Roll away that stone and get out of that tomb. Rise with Jesus this Easter. You're depressed? Go see a doctor and get some medicine. Medicine is a gift from God. You need to better your health? Go on a diet. I used to weigh more than 320 pounds at one point in my life. I was in the tomb. And it was even after I, I became a priest. You see, the, the fact that we, we know our faith, I knew the faith very well. I was in the seminary for a very long time to learn a lot of stuff. But it wasn't that... It wasn't until Jesus touched me personally with his love that I was able to get out of that tomb, get the counseling that I needed for past issues that I had. Because I came to this country because of my parents' divorce, because I was bullied in school, We've all got stuff. I could go down the list. Because I was almost thrown out of the seminary. I wasn't. <laughs> I left on my own. Switched seminaries. But all of that provided issues for me. As each of you has issues from your past because of the abuse you have suffered, the neglect, the divorce you went through, Deal with them. It wasn't until I dealt with my issues that I, the weight went away. An exercise program, a healthy eating program. Deal with your issues. Whatever tomb you find yourself in. If you're lonely, Find friends, or if you want to have a suitable partner, look for one. CatholicMatch.com, CatholicSingles.com, Ave Maria Singles. There's nothing wrong with that. God wants you to have good company in life. Whatever issues you have, you're unhappy at work, there's lots of jobs around. You have a rocky marriage, get the help you need. Somebody's abusing you in your life, get rid of them. No, you have no need to allow yourself to be abused in this life. No need. No need. God didn't put you on this earth to be abused. Whatever tomb you find yourself in, Stop worshipping those gods that keep you there and worship the God of life. The God who says, roll away that stone. Get out of that tomb and rise with me this Easter. That's what he wants. Jesus rose already 2,000 years ago. He rose. He rose some 2,000 years ago. It's 
time for you to rise from whatever tomb you find yourself in. He rose. Are you going to? Are you going to remain in that tomb? It's a question for us this Easter. You know, there's no better illustration to point for us the picture of the great love of God for each and every one of us. See, there's no coincidences. It's Easter Sunday and you might have thought to yourself, you know, I'm just going to church because somebody invited me or because I have to do it because it's Easter, you know. There are no coincidences. It's a God incident that you are here this morning because God wanted you to be here. Because God knows what you're going through. And each of you is going through stuff. All of you have issues. All of us have issues. I do too. You want to know them? <laughs> I'm sure you do, but I won't tell you. <laughs> we all got issues and things that we're dealing with. And God wanted you to be here because he wanted you to hear how much he loves you that he gave his life for you and that he doesn't want you to be in the tomb he wants you to live that's why you're here look at the cross here God our God not the God of the world okay not those gods that you worship out there not the gods of the Romans and the Greeks and, and, and the gods that you worship on a daily basis no 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 this God right here the one who gave his son, his only son, to die for us. This God came down from heaven and gave his life for you, died for you. I'm always reminded of the Bible passage that says, you know, even though a mother is capable of forgetting her own children, I will never forget you. And mothers can forget their own children because we're all human beings. But even though a mother can forget her own children, God says, I will never forget you, ever. You are so special to me. I have chosen you. I have elected you. You are mine. And I've come back for you. When I went to Oaxaca, Mexico for an experience during the seminary, I went to the town of Oaxaca, to one of the most impoverished states in Mexico and I'm, I was there in a parish and the parish had a ministry team that would go to the local garbage dump the local garbage dump where the very poor people the most impoverished people would come and try to salvage something that they could use. And I was in that parish. And you know, speaking of garbage dump, you've heard of the term Gehenna? The term Gehenna refers to the garbage dump outside of Rome. And Gehenna, Jesus said, you know, is hell. How many people find themselves in Gehenna, in hell, in a garbage dump? They're dead in a garbage dump, in their depression, their loneliness, their fear, all their problems. The 
That's why we have the number one cause of death around is suicide. People taking their lives. The most prescribed drugs around are those for depression and anxiety because people find themselves today as they did before in Gehenna in a garbage dump. And one day I'm there in that parish in Oaxaca and the team that would go to the garbage dump to try to help the people who would try to salvage something came back one day with a six-year-old girl that they found abandoned at the garbage dump by her mother. Her mother abandoned her at the garbage dump. And don't be judging that mother because you don't know what she went through to get her to that point in her life. Not one of us is better than her. We're all sinners. All of us. All men have sinned, the Bible says, and have fallen short of the glory of God. All of us have issues. And they brought the little girl to the parish. She's six years old. And they leave her there in the parish office. And I said to her, you must be hungry. And she says, yes. So I went and I got her a pastry, a big pastry, and a glass of milk. And I set it in front of her. And I said, here, eat your pastry and drink your milk while I'm going to go and get help. And I went to call the local convent that was run by sisters, nuns. And I came back and I look at the bread and the milk and she's only eaten a little bit of the bread and just a, drank a little bit of the milk and I said to her how come you haven't finished your bread and drank all your milk didn't you say you were hungry didn't you say you were hungry and she said I'm saving them for my mother I'm saving them for my mother because my mom's going to come back for me. My mom's coming back for me, she said. And she began to cry. My mom's coming back for me. My mom's coming back. And she's hungry. I'm saving them for her. My mom's coming back. That mother never came back for her daughter. She ended up in an orphanage. But God, in His Son Jesus Christ, has come back for each and every one of us. God in His Son Jesus Christ has come back for you. To get you out of that garbage dump. Out of Gehenna. Gehenna was the garbage dump outside of the city of Jerusalem. Like that garbage dump in Oaxaca. How many of us find ourselves in garbage dumps in the city of Las Vegas? Hmm? Step out of those garbage dumps, says the Lord Jesus today because I have come back for you. That mother never came back. Maybe in your own life, people have abandoned you, hurt you, betrayed you. You've gone through so much hurt, haven't you? People have left you in a garbage dump. Life has left you in a garbage dump. God, in His grace,
great love for you, has come back for you, to rescue you, take you out of there, for he loves you, so that just as he rose and lives, you too can rise and live.